This episode finds us in the wonderful Tuscan Island region again. If these gems are appealing to you, make sure you watch our earlier episode on Elba Island, the biggest of the Tuscan Islands. In this video, we will focus on Iola del Giglio and Iola di Gianutri, where we spend a couple very windy days before we head toward Rome and the Tiber River town of Fiumicino. So we left Elba Island, uh, Porto Ferrario, around midday today, and it was about 40 miles to get down here to uh, Giglio Island, which is what we're looking at right here. So we're gonna stay here tonight. Giglio is about eight miles off. This is the Italian mainland here. It's like a peninsula that comes out from the main part of the, the mainland, but it's still part of the mainland. So we're gonna go over there tomorrow. Um, but tonight we're staying here in Giglio Island. Uh, they've got a castello, a, a castle structure up there near the top. It's supposed to be quite interesting to go up and look at, catch a bus and go up there. And uh, they used that uh, during the early time when the island was settled to avoid pirate attacks. So the pirates would come shore. If they were up in the castle, they had some uh, defense up there and some timing to get prepared for defending themselves against pirates. But the most well-known thing about this island was back in January of 2012 when the cruise ship Costa Concordia ran aground here on these rocks right here and uh, right outside the main port. So um, ran aground and was here for I think over a year while they tried to figure out how to get it off the reef it was stuck on and uh, hauled away and scrapped in Genoa. 32 people died. The captain and some of the crew, I believe, are being held with charges of manslaughter. We'll be approaching the harbor where that happened and probably anchor there or just further down at one of the calas just down the coast from there. But you're supposed to, you're supposed to be able to anchor right off of the entrance to the marina. When we came in there, it was really deep and it's dark, the water's dark, you can't really see too well through it because the sun's down. And uh, knowing that a big cruise ship ran aground here, it was both made us a little bit squeamish about trying to anchor really close to shore and relax about it. So we're going around the corner to a little cala. Um, so we're going right into this area and check this out. A couple, a couple big yachts in there. So we'll see how that works. Supposedly it's it's deep as well, um, but we'll check it out and see if we can make it work. The 144,000 ton Costa Concordia cruise ship was carrying 4,252 persons when in January 2012, it hit an underground rock eight meters below the surface of the water. A 50 meter long hole was ripped in the hull and water began flooding in. Here is the damaged area with a huge boulder lodged in the end of the cut that was made. The onboard announcement told passengers an electrical systems failure had happened. It is understandable that chaos has to be managed while damage and present conditions are assessed, but the delay in initiating an evacuation quite likely played a role in the suffering and potentially even the deaths that occurred. This is the worst Italian maritime disaster since the Second World War. The captain was convicted of manslaughter, causing a shipwreck and abandoning ship. He got into a lifeboat when there were still 500 passengers on board. For his decisions and actions, he was sentenced to 16 years in jail. It took months for rescue divers to search the wreckage for the remains of those who died on board. One body wasn't discovered until the wreck was raised, made upright, and moved to the port of Genoa to be scrapped nearly 200 miles and two years from the time and place of the accident. I will include links to articles on this disaster in the video description. I will also credit the wonderful photographers who brought these images to the world. Okay, on a happier note. Once we were settled on anchor, we tried to take in the island as it exists today. And once we were able to clear and then refocus our minds, we realized there was a lot to enjoy here. On our morning walk into the port town, we took in the amazing architecture and the views of the cala, or coves, lining the shore. 
We would be back to this island in two days time, but now we needed to make our way over to Porto Santo Stefano to provision, to do laundry and clean, and to meet our friends. Exhausted after a full day of running around the town, we relaxed on the dock with some local music and cold beverages. After a very rough night tied to the dock, we welcomed Christy and Steve on board, and we set off for Iola del Giglio, take two. We anchored in a similar location to where we had been two days previous and tucked in as much as we could since the winds were predicted to be quite high. We again walked to the port town and then enjoyed a bus trip to the Castello on the island's high point. We took in the rustically beautiful village that exists inside the walls of this hilltop fortress. morning we enjoyed a vigorous sail to Ioli di Gianutri to again tuck in out of the wind which was forecast to be well over 25 knots. The shape of this island was perfect given the conditions outside. Throughout the afternoon and evening we wouldn't even know that there was a blow going on and we had tucked so far into the cove that we felt no swell through the night. You can see from these vantage points how we had wriggled right into this very protected area. Surprisingly, after an initial exploration of the underwater world, everyone was eager to put in a little work cleaning the waterline. Go figure! Though the wife of the couple has been a longtime friend of mine, the husband sells sailboats for a living and was actually our broker for the purchase and delivery of sea rows. How many people get this level of service from their broker? And his wife. Thanks, Steve and Christy. You're welcome back on board anytime. The snorkeling here was amazing. Here are some of the special areas we discovered as we swam around this cala. Hope you enjoy it. We departed early the following morning to make our way the 54 nautical miles to the Porto Romano Marina in Fiumicino, which is only a 15 minute drive by car to the airport that Steve, Christy and I would fly out of the next day. It never looks the same in pictures though, unfortunately. The early sail was fast and we all enjoyed how Sea Rose happily rode along on the significant swell. Here's one of the many fast power boats we saw throughout the day. We believe this rooster tail is just an ego thing, that it doesn't serve any specific purpose for propelling the boat. Does anyone know anything about these? Leave a comment on this video if you know the answer. Our destination was a marina a couple miles up the river Tiber, here. It is incredible to think we are on a river that winds its way from the Italian mountains and through the ancient city of Rome before making its way into the Mediterranean Sea at Fiumicino. Because of its travels though, the river was dirty, as was the marina's waterways. However, the grounds were beautiful and the facilities were very nice. And this location was perfect to have Tom work on several boat projects while I went home to spend time with our youngest son and to see how our house and our dog were doing. Once tied up, we took our garbage and recycling to the very efficient Italian stations and cleaned up the boat. 
For the trips to the airport, we rented the marina's loaner car. This turned out to be a total junker. As Tom returned from dropping Steve and Christy at the airport, the muffler began to drag, causing Tom to pull over on the freeway. Yikes. Next time, I think we'll probably politely decline to rent a car in such tough shape. Oh well, we all survived and had a good laugh. The night before we all flew back home to the United States, we had an enjoyable dinner along the coast. In the morning, we said our goodbyes. For now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you did.